Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Texas Fly Fishing Report. This is the companion YouTube channel to www.texasflycaster.com where you can go to find highly detailed information about fly fishing in Texas. Hi, and welcome to the Friday, June 19th, Texas Fly Fishing Report for the weekend of June 19th, 2015. My name is Shannon, and as you know, this is a supplemental video for the website www.texasflycaster.com. As you saw in the introduction, of course, and the rolling pre-credits there, um, I was fishing yesterday as Tropical Depression Bill passed by. I could see it this morning even up to the north in Oklahoma and it had passed by even though we had some wind and things like that. There's plenty of uh, leaves down and branches down all over the place and I'm sure all up the middle of the state Tropical Storm Bill did its damage. So you know one of the variables we have of all the many variables in fly fishing is weather and it's definitely the number one thing going on right now that has an effect on our fly fishing abilities and establishing patterns so uh, just to say a little bit about patterns you know that it, that term comes from really bass fishing and um, the way guys establish you know conscious patterns of how to find fish and that's what we do here it's just that our patterns are based on fly fishing so the weather is kind of making the water go up and down as far as lakes and every stream and everything else a lot of lakes will be back to capacity they'll be releasing heavily again since we had so much rain throughout the state and you know that um, as you saw, I'll just kick back to that again, the, uh, the little bit of footage at the beginning, there's a fairly decent release going on, on uh, at Lake Ray Roberts and below the dam there, and that's where I caught fish in the tropical depression yesterday. So you've got to go out and establish your own patterns as far as finding fish and finding what they're eating and when they're eating. They're in tight schools, and so they're, at least in this situation, they were in tight schools, and so it was kind of an interesting uh, on and off thing that if you got there and you weren't catching any, you might be tempted to leave, but instead, if you stay, those schools come back across and work their way through, and you'll catch fish, and then they'll go away, and then they'll be back in a, you know, a few minutes maybe, or a few, <laughs> maybe an hour. So that's how that works with establishing patterns. It's really important that you not uh, give up even when the water is fluctuating a lot and the color might be off. Uh, make sure that you adjust your colors and try. I've, I've never had to try so many different flies as I have at the beginning of this summer to try and, and actually figure out what's going on and, and uh, adjust the color to, to the bite. Uh, right now what's working for me for sand bass, for example, and for bass is uh, a red over white with the uh, using the big bright fluoro red over white uh, clouser. Of course I tie those uh, on a jig hook and they work really well with just a real bright silver holographic flash through the middle. So anyway, that's your, your idea of what you want to do as you're pursuing fish this weekend is try to establish your patterns and don't count on them lasting because of the water fluctuations. Um, Lake Ray Roberts is uh, boat worthy now according to TVWD sources but their boat ramps aren't open so that means that if you for that, that lake for example and several other lakes around here if you wanted to get on the lake you better have your boat already there because there's no way to launch boats still on these lakes because they're so high I would suggest if you have an opportunity and you're in North Texas you look towards the west even Bridgeport uh, a notoriously low lake for many many years is, is filled to the brim and they're releasing water there but you might be able to have a better chance of actually getting on that lake if you have have a boat. <clears throat> of course, if you have a kayak, your odds are even greater that you can get on the water because you can just hoist it over a gate or a fence and get in there and, and go ahead and, and launch and fish that way. And it's very effective right now and you're going to find a lot of fish in the grass. Along the Texas coast, there is a developing an expanding area of a dead zone that reaches from 
typically it's it's in, on, off of the uh, Mississippi River, and we're not talking inshore; we're talking offshore. Um, all the time off the Mississippi because of all the fresh water flowing out there. Now, because of all the fresh water flowing out here in Texas, we've got a situation where uh, that dead zone, that, that little drawing, it looks a lot like uh, overlays on the drought map, is starting to stretch down the Texas coast and, uh, you know, reach down on the offshore along the Texas coast. So we are very wary of this dead zone effect and, uh, Got to keep your eyes on that, but the inshore people are going to be affected, you know, in the bays and stuff like that by the uh, huge inflows from from the rivers that drain off into the inshore and eventually reach offshore. But it's it's a uh, interesting phenomenon, not a good effect. It also leads to blooms, multiple blooms and things like that that will really really be devastating uh, should they develop as expected. One good thing I would think that would come from a tropical storm and the way it stirs up a, uh, a water body like the Gulf of Mexico is that it definitely um, could shake up that, that dead zone and, and maybe push some water around and help things actually offshore. In conclusion today, I hope, of course, that you got your eyes on that video first always be sure to read as well as watch read at www.texasflycaster.com what I have here is really a cool thing that I th kind of thought of for using you know we have hooks that get dull you got to sharpen your hooks right you got to I use a ceramic Timco thing for actually sharpening the point of the hook but I get a few hooks in my in my uh, <clears throat> in my fly box I'll start piling flies in there when I'm changing flies so much and they'll make contact with, you know, the fur will make contact with another hook and then that hook will get a little bit of rust just on the surface. Even that is enough to slow down the hook set so, or to prevent a really good hook set. Uh, so you want to go ahead and knock that rust off and what I suggest is one of these Sally Beauty Company 4 uh, grade uh, things for actually are working on fingernails and what it does is on the super fine that's all you need really probably super fine or fine for uh getting the rust off the upper you know the sprout the sprout <laughs> sprout the sprout of the hook and uh getting that rust off because that just even that much you know rust and really annoys me i'm an anti-rust person so anyway and you can also use these guys. I've used it on tortoise shell sunglasses. I had a pair of brand new Smiths that I dropped once. But they just fell and they slid all 20 feet down as concrete embankment upside down. So they were just ground up along the top edge. Took them off and started thinking about it. And I used one of these using three, I think at least three of the four different grades of, of coarseness. And polished them back to a shine. So that, that works on, on things that are really, what would we say, fragile or susceptible like uh, tortoise shell sunglass frames and things like that for polishing those back. Anyway, the last thing I've got for you is I saw this morning on one of the morning talk shows talking about sunscreen again. Of course, the the moving target of what sunscreen works and what sunscreen doesn't. Today, they were talking specifically about the sunscreen that is, what do they call it? It is called Broad Spectrum. That's UVA and UVB. So the one sunscreen I've been using all these years turns out to be Broad Spectrum. That's Smart Shield. This stuff is great. I've been using it for about 10 years now. Um, it's not going to save my life, but it definitely uh, will save some of my skin along the way, I think. So Smart Shield broad spectrum. That's what you look for in any sunscreen you buy. It's sunscreen time of the year. I think we're into a situation now where we're going to have some sunny days, very hot and sunny days. And so wear your sunscreen and apply it often. Make sure that um, you also cover up at the same time. You realize that wearing a hat and being on the water is not all you need. I've done many, many stories on this. And even though I I've been abused a little bit by the sun along the way. That's just because the volume of time I spend, it's, it's kind of hard to avoid. But anyway, those are the tips for today and this weekend. I hope you have a great weekend. Make sure you check out the website and be sure and subscribe to Texas Flycaster YouTube channel or even the Texas Flycaster website where you can buy paper read stories about 
fly fishing hotspots, which I've had several come up lately, and those are paper reeds, simply just to make people, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people get upset because it gets really crowded, and so if you don't want to pay your dime, then you don't have to go. You don't have to go at all. So there's lots of free reading and lots of pay-per-view reading coming on. So have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week at Texas Flycaster.